Okay, to all those joining us by social media, we've called for uh, an emergency press conference. The development uh, today, we're at court, uh, before the Lusaka Magistrate Court, and uh, this afternoon we learned that there were purported letters of expulsion written to some of our leaders. Of course, we've demonstrated that those letters are illegal, and the purpose of the press conference today is uh, to speak to the country and to our members on this ongoing battle. This is not a battle that is ending today. And uh, I will invite Honorable uh, uh, Stephen Campiongo, our Member of Parliament for Shuangandu, is going to conduct the press conference for us. Uh, just start by introducing the leaders we are with, and uh, then we will follow as you guide. Member of the cabinet, Professor Nkanduluo, uh, with us representing the women, our female leaders. Next to her is the Honorable MP for uh, the people of Amenshi, <laughs> Chilovi <laughs> constituents. Um, Honorable MP, who is still a suspendee, member of parliament for Kasha, Mr. Honorable Mlenga Fube. Next to him is our National Youth Chairperson, Honorable Member of Parliament for Kanfinsa, Member of Central Committee, Honorable Christopher Kangombe. So this briefing will be very short, and uh, we are only going to have uh, the main speaker being the Deputy Secretary General. But before he uh, gives this message, we shall, I will start by inviting our chairperson for legal, Honorable George Tsanga, Member of Parliament for Kasha, to just uh, give a few insights regarding the legal uh, um, uh, issues that are going on um, as, as we stand. Honorable Tsanga, it's your time to... Uh, you can speak from where you are seated. But I just want, to, before I invite him, just to make it very clear to our dear viewers that uh, you know those uh, letters that are secreting from some cowards who can't even have uh, the bravity of uh, facing the real members of the Patriot Front. We want you as our members to understand that here we are as your leaders are going to stand firm and fight the government through these sponsored uh, surrogates. Ababa chamwenso abatu alibeba ti. Bae varumbe kofesha nchito kunyu don. Babe nga wa minister. Obafuwa yuko tumini motu wakua tibara wumbana ngu. Pantu walefu kure no uteko. Tawako selinga ifu want to stand as opposition. They want to be, to eat with both hands. So what will be good for them is better to go and eat with this new don who have brought a lot of misery to our people. They don't care about the people. They have no principles, no morals. So if you have a lot of people, you have to say, 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 you have if you chitika pali kano kashita, elo tatuaita shimu kanga mangu. Uyinko nkani yako wakalemba mkalamba. Ba wana bo tisanga mkwai. Futi mwakwati okola ndakona avantu besu. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, opposition whip, for giving me the opportunity to speak to our people. Um, I've been instructed that I sh I'll better speak when I'm standing. I just want to thank the, the, the Chief Whip for giving me the opportunity to speak to our people. Let me, before I briefly speak, recognize the protocols that are here, starting with the senior most members of the Central Committee of the Patriotic Front, uh, the Leader of Opposition in Parliament, Honorable Brian Mundubide, the Chief Whip, Honorable Stephen Campiongo, the Deputy Secretary General, Honorable Nixon Chilangwa, and all Central Committee members who are here, and members of parliament who have come to join us for this short briefing. Mine are very few remarks. 
um, just to point out our deep concern with what is going on. Let me preface my brief remark by first uh, just restating what Honorable Stephen Campiongo has said. But insofar as the Patriotic Front is concerned, uh, Honorable Mao Sampa remains expelled from the Patriotic Front. He doesn't have the authority to make any decision or to make an appointment or to make any you know, dismissals of members from the Patriotic Front because he remains an expelled member of the party. On top of that, we have actually taken various cases to court for interpretation because we believe that you know, the matters that have come to the fore require judicial decisions to be made about them. The decision to expel Mr. Sampa is a subject of court proceedings. We are waiting for the court to make a decision to confirm whether the decision to expel him can be sustained by the court. There are also other matters that we've taken to court, including challenging the decision of the Speaker of the National Assembly to recognize the Honorable Chavinga as the leader of opposition in Parliament when that uh, appointment was made in flagrant disregard of the law. Now, why am I concerned about what, what is going on? Today we were in court trying to prosecute these individuals for the various crimes that they've committed. And we were informed, rather surprisingly, that the DPP has excised his powers by writing a letter to the court saying that he is terminating the proceedings of the court. That issue has been challenged by our lawyers because the DPP does not operate by writing letters when dealing with matters that are before the court. The DPP is guided by the NPA Act and the Constitution on how he can take over the proceedings that are instigated by private members as a private prosecution. So we expect that the court is going to make a decision you know, uh, sooner rather than later on whether what the DPP has done in this instance is correct. We also have a matter before Mr. Ju Madam Justice Chocho in which we, e we argue the issues of injunction. Now, this is a point I wanted to emphasize. When a party brings a matter to court and seeks an injunction, there is a fee there's an, a an indication that the matter is urgent. The reason is simple. It's because we would like to have the status quo maintained. And our highest expectations were that the Honorable Madam Justice Church was going to see the agency of this matter. Because you see, the activities that our Honorable Sampa is undertaking right now, he's doing them simply because he has not been injuncted by the court, as is expected. Because we have argued before that court that the conference or the, treat, the retreat that brought Mao Sampa to this fictitious presidency that he's declaring himself to be was actually an illegal institution or an illegal industry. So we expected that the judge should by now at least have made a direction while the merits of a case are being considered before her court to, to injunct Honorable Sampa with what he's doing. Or if she didn't agree with us, she should, made a, she should have made a decision that would have definitely decided to appeal so that we can get the right decision from the right forum. I had said before and I would like to repeat it here. I think this matter must not be trivialized. This is a very important matter. And you know, it lies at the center of the exercise of rights that are enshrined in the Bill of Rights in our Constitution. Having a political association is a recognized right in the Constitution. If people choose how they would like to associate for themselves, everybody, everybody in the nation has got the duty to respect that right to associate. No third party has got the right to interfere either directly or indirectly in the affairs of a party such as a patriotic front. We are concerned that various institutions and individuals are interfering in the operations of Patriotic Front. I can single out the, the, the show of societies with the changes that have taken place there. I can single out and I can point a finger of accusation at the Republican president because we have seen that consistently he has been supporting the, the, the agenda that Mao Sampa and his, uh, his colleagues have had to try and distract and destroy the Patriotic Front. I want to remind the president that under Article 91 and Ad Article 92, he is responsible for exercising the presidential powers with dignity, with leadership, and with integrity. These three characteristics qualify for somebody who is supposed to be acting as, as president in, in, in this republic. Our concern is that with what is going on, with the stopgap that is taking place in the litigation that, to be, that is before court, a lot of wrong things are going to happen. And by the time we get to the end of the trial, that is before the high court, so much destruction will have taken place in the patriotic front. And this is why I would said before that the importance of this matter must be recognized by everybody, including the Republican Chief Justice himself. I had made a call before, and I can only repeat it now, that the importance of this matter must have demanded that the Chief Justice must have, you know, uh, sat himself as a, as a high court judge, which he has got 
Mao Sampa, with the support that is enjoying from the UPND government, is designed to destroy the, not only the patriotic front, but all other opposition political parties. Mind you, it starts with only one political institution. It goes to others once it is successfully done against one. But we want to call upon members of the patriotic front. It is time for them to stand up and be vigilant and now defend their party. Because it is very clear that sometimes these institutions that are supposed to give us justice, and these institutions that are supposed to regulate the association of political parties, such as resource societies, have all been destroyed and have all been compromised. Now, when there's compromise, you know, it's only a stupid fool who can go to a casino if you know that the dice has been tempered with by somebody who is regulating that casino. It appears now that these government institutions have all been compromised, and sometimes it is very unfair for us to continue expecting that we're going to get a fair share of justice from these institutions. Now, there's a call that is being made by the leadership, and I think the SG is going to emphasize on that point, that we as members of Patriotic Front have a duty to rise up to defend not only the Patriotic Front, but multi-party politics in this nation. You see, the only way you can change a political party, a leadership, is if you go to a general election. We went to a general election in 2021 in, in August. We all contested in these elections, and we accepted the result. Honorable Kampiongo is sitting in Shiwangandu because he was elected by the people of, people of Shiwangandu. Honorable Mufara is sitting in, in Lunte because he, he was elected by the people. I'm sitting in Ukasha because I was elected. Now, if other political players can begin to create an environment that is so chaotic, to try and ensure that we distract the patriotic front. People are going to stand up and rise and defend the multi-party politics in this nation. But more so, this is the duty of the members of PF, and I want to make a clarion call to all of you to listen to what the Deputy Secretary General is going to say about the need for us to protect not only this political party, but also the, the institution of multi-party politics in this nation. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much. Ndesu bila mayu mfuila, ukula nda kwa hawa loe hawa fiku kire nsa kwe. Buino wino hawa shika. Ukula nda kwa hawa mayu mfuila wale tila. Ifuwe nge chuparicha PF tuwa tila. Tulekele ama koti ya puishe nturubu ndishe. Pantumu makoti, emo tupuishe chanshi, uku pusana kwa vantu. Eero vala ndo kutila, nga chafika pane mbe ne mbe. Paja pa kutibantu wa mbomvela manje kutu kainda kukoti. Palibe wa meno za buwela hako na avu wa buwela. Waka mbati nishu mutu ni kuzichita defend. Walela ndo kutila wa walefu wa ukula wafi wa kangalume. Walo ndoro ufo batu salu wa bonseba hii mpia wekeri hapa wa salu wa vantu. So uwe mutunga wa salu wa kangalume hati wisi o nyonge wa mpando. Kuwa salu wa wino wino. Enate chipu wa pakuti eka lefi hati nyonge niyo chipu nechicha uwe mpi. Apono mbepo tu wala fika nomba Epa la wama Wala nda wala uyo kwa watinga Cha shupa Na kanyerele nga waka pampa Mina kala itashani Kala suma So mwewa kwete tontonga Nda kutia kutu mwapoke ifi Pune ifi batu pela vantu Avena shi wangandu wansale miku itatu Waisa na kalufu mwe Vene nitu wapokolola Apona ineno mbepo wala nsanga It's better to let Wambe kukabushanya nomba Pa kukabushanya Kashi mwana landa mwino baloya. Na mwewe na shiwa nangandunga mwile umfwa. Ukuti ya nomba. Kati ya kale tuwa. Pachi puna mwa mpere chini mwuma mpere. Anga mwile fwa wase nde wapo kebu kumaka. Chini kwenye mwa. Mkwa ipari kano kashita. Isha posene ishita. Na ala ishita invite. Umu kala mbanka la katimba. Kabulu mwulumu ishiti nari nisori ya nkoko. Nisori ya mfumu. Baona Bo Nixon Chilangwa, my Deputy Secretary General, Wayum P. Gather here this late afternoon, early evening, to talk to all of you colleagues out there about recent happenings in our nation, recent happenings in your beloved party, the Patriotic Front. And I want to thank all the leaders of other political parties those who stood with us, those who've continued calling us, those who've continued encouraging us, and those who have outrightly rebuked the happenings and the behavior of the government and of one Mao Sampa. And when we say government, the government has got leadership, and the leader of that government is President Akainde Hichlema. And he will not be absorbed from blame. 
at all. He is at the center of what is happening, and it's about the time he started to reform. It's for his own good. It's for his own political survival that he changes course. We must state here, colleagues, that we have active matters in the High Court, Lusaka Magistrate Court, and these actions being carried out with impunity, Baumao Sampa, violate the sanctity and integrity of the courts of law. Maos, please, do not drag our legal system, our justice system, into your nonsense. Please do not drag our justice system, our legal system, into your nonsense. There is a limit to which you can provoke the legal system, the judiciary. Just because you are given some sort of lifeline does not mean that you can do everything you want to do to the exclusion of what is going on in the courts of law. That is free advice. In other circles, it's called free consultancy. That actually normally costs money. I'm giving to you free of charge. We ask you that you are in suspension, you are on suspension, you are expelled from this organization. How do you have the audacity of issuing, even issuing statements, of even issuing letters, Please, there come a time in life, Miles, when anybody, everybody should behave like a normal human being. I want to appeal to you that start behaving like a normal human being because the crusade you have embarked on has an expiry date. And that expiry date is coming around and it's coming around very, very quickly. So you better start behaving like a normal human being. Because when the legal fees, when the legal issues start following you, Miles, even your finances will run away from you. You have caused enough damage to yourself and your family. So it is about time you sat down to reflect and think through all this particular nonsense that you are and the pain that you are causing to ordinary Zambians. You have no mandate whatsoever to do what you are doing. Nobody gave you this mandate. You cannot organize a picnic and out of the picnic, you decide to have an election. It doesn't work like that. There are procedures that must be followed. And none of those procedures were ever followed. And you have no mandate whatsoever to organize such a gathering. If you organize a retreat or a picnic, please concentrate on what you do during a retreat or what you eat during a picnic. Do not drag the entire country into this level of nonsense. We have noted your activities, that they are being sponsored, and, and of course, Miles, you have no money for you to organize a retreat. You have no resources whatsoever to do what you are doing, to gallivant and move on. We have no resources, Miles. We know that for sure. So who is financing you? We know a businessman who is close to powers that be, and you've been getting money from him. We know that for sure. And other states sponsoring you, state agents sponsoring you, you will be abandoned. And they will abandon you very, very soon. They will throw you under the bus. And there you are going at Chimpuena like they're helping you and supporting you. They are not. They are just using you. How do you allow yourself, yourself to be used in this particular fashion? How? The time for reckoning is at hand. You know, colleagues, and our members across the country, some of you are phoning, some of you do not understand what is going on. Colleagues, I want you to bring you to speed. When you hear about what happens in Parliament, please look for a book which is called The Standing Orders. And it outlines everything that must happen and be done in Parliament. When you see something that does not conform 
to the standing orders of parliament, then you know that there's an illegality. So everything that has happened to members of parliament in the House, especially PF members of parliament, please refer to the standing orders and you see an, an illegality going on in the House. So do that. Everything must be referred to this book. So do not panic. When we criticize the UPND government for failure, for not, for not meeting their obligations, you ask us a question to say, as PF, what, what would you have done in, the, in such circumstances? What were, you, what were your plans? Colleagues, we've got a book here, which we call the PNF Manifesto, 2021 to 2026. It is the most richest resource as at now to what PF would have delivered, to what PF would have continued doing, because we have this book of reference. We don't just talk from without. We have a book of reference, which is this book. Colleague, when we say our colleagues have abrogated the Constitution, <coughs> do not just shout from the terrace without understanding what we are talking about. When we say the President Taka in the Hitchley must swore to protect and defend the Constitution, colleagues, look for this book, The Constitution of Zambia. Read through it. Understand. Once you do that, you'll be on terra firma of what you're going to say, and you are going to agree or disagree with us or the other group. It is all here. This book also tells you that a political party is a constitution organ which has got which stipulates things that is expected of it. You as ordinary Zambians. You, as members of this party, the PF, you can sue the PF if this constitution is abrogated. You can fall up on certain issues on procedures because of this. And because of this, each political party submits to the Registrar of Society its constitution. This is the PF constitution. The PF constitution stipulates procedures and the manner of holding its meetings. It tells you who can convene which meeting. It tells you can convene a branch meeting, a ward meeting, constituents meeting, district meeting, provincial meeting, central committee meeting, and it also tells you who can convene a national council and who can convene a general conference. And who is eligible to attend all these meetings. It's not every Jim and Jack. If you are not a member of the PF, you cannot attend the general conference. If you are not one of those who are listed, you cannot attend. If you are a suspended member, you are in bad standing with the party, you cannot, sta you cannot stand at an election. You cannot even convene a meeting. You cannot even attend such a meeting. Colleagues, it's all here. And these are the things that we shall continuously continue to submit to the courts of law. And we believe, we believe so well that the courts of law are going to come through. Not because of how I speak, not because I say nice things, not because of Emmanuel Mamba, because of this document which is called the Constitution. And because of this court document which is called the Constitution of the Republic of Zambia. These are the guiding documents that anyone must use and must follow when dealing with these matters. Because of this document, called the standing orders, which are used in Parliament to follow procedure. These are the documents. Colleagues, it's the same thing. If somebody comes to you to say, me, I'm a prophet from such and such a ministry, there's a document which guides how a Christian must behave and how he must talk. This is the Bible here. So in the same manner that Christians refer to the Bible, that's in the same manner that the PF members refer to the PF Constitution. It is in the same manner that judges and courts of law refer to the Constitution of Zambia. So colleagues, all of, wherever, wherever you are, all over Zambia, please I want to ask you that exercise some level of patience as we go through this period this period will not go forever. 
what must start can al must always come to an end. And the people pushing Mao Sampa to be used in, the, in that particular fashion, unfortunately, they will, not, they will not last forever. The government of the UPND, President Haka Inde Ichilema, his expiry date, the expiry date of his rule is around the corner. The writing is on the wall. The man has lost ground. I can even refer you to a Bible reading. If you look, go to Mark 13, verse 28, it's very clear. Mark 13, verse 28. And that particular Bible reading tells me to say, the fig tree teaches us a lesson. When its branches become green and soft and the new leaves begin to grow, you know that summer is very near. You know that summer is very near. When people every day on the radio are saying this president lied to us, this president lies left, right, and center, this president promised that he will cut international trips, this president has done nearly 60 international trips, this is the president who tells Zambians that all is well, we've performed far much better, but every Zambian is saying these guys have done far worse than we anticipated. This is the president who promised that the price of milk will come down. This is the president who has elected and ignored the cries of the Zambians. This is the president who said if he's voted into power in the morning and by 14 hours, the, the, the exchange rate of the kwacha against the dollar would have come down. This is the president who told you Zambians that because of his global connections, He's bringing $25.6 billion worth of investment into this economy. Has anyone seen that kind of investment yet? Me, I'm here to see it. This is the same president, colleagues, who told us that he will reduce his, 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 his trips. This is the president who said Vendata must not be allowed here in this country. Today they are pleading and, 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 and clapping for Vendata. He says the PF have killed the farmers. Year in, year out from 2021, farmers are complaining about chaotic supply system for the inputs. This is the president who has said they have delivered 900% farming inputs this year. Lo and behold, people are sharing fertilizer in what is commonly referred to as medas. This is the presidency under Wakayunde H.L.M. as presidency. They have legitimized a certain word called, called junkies. When boys speak, they want to work, they want some sort of engagement, they are referred to as junkies. Nobody must refer to another human being as a junkie. Nobody should be referred to as a junkie. But we hear UPND ministers referring to people as junkies. That's totally unacceptable. That's not right. How do you refer to another human being as a junkie? This term has just come with UPND. It was never there during, during the PF. It was not there during the MMD. So you youths, Zambian youths, you rise in your big numbers to go and vote for this person to become your president instead of giving you what he promised you, heaven on earth, jobs, even hearing, he cannot give you an ear, he starts calling you that you are junkies. That's not acceptable. You must, you, must, you must refuse to be referred to as junkies. So, colleagues, today I'm here to assure our members across the country that the PF leadership is in charge of the affairs of the party. We are in total control because the so-called Mao Sampa group do not belong to PF. They are not part of us. If indeed, as I hear that some people are being disciplined, some being, people are being expelled, who constituted the disciplinary committee? Which central committee started to ratify such decisions? It's all here. For you to discipline anybody, you must follow the procedure. There is a code which we follow. And if you, somebody must be someone to come for a meeting, there is what we call the cause of natural justice. You don't call somebody in the middle of the night. Tomorrow you must answer charges. Today you have not answered charges. 
you are being expelled. Who does that? Via social, Via social media. Unfortunately, all those who are receiving funny letters from these characters, please ignore those letters. Because these guys have got no locust standing for them to charge you, for them to discipline you, because they are not in charge of the political party called the Patriotic Front. We are in charge. Colleagues in Parliament, you have got a duty to represent your people. You've got a duty to speak on behalf of the Zambians. You have a duty to bring out the heels and the failures of the UPND. That's our duty. That's why we are called the opposition. Colleagues across the country, I want you to continue preparing. Preparing because when we take over government, we are not going to waste time. We are not going to be looking for who must do this and so on. For us, our duty is to start implementing. You remember what President Sasa did? He said within 90 days. Within 90 days, things started happening. President Lungu continued with Michael Sata's vision, and we delivered to the full expectation of the Zambians. So for us, our duty is to assure you, all of you colleagues, that what you are seeing these colleagues doing, Mao Sampa in particular, they are the kicks of a dying horse. Yes, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. Mao Sampa's time is coming to its evening. Just like President Yaka in this time, as President of the country, of Republic of Zambia, President Haka in the Ichilema cannot go beyond it. What we saw that, that the trucks that collided in Chirundu. And that is not old Mukula you are selling, that we saw. Those are fresh, straight from, uh, from the forest. What do you have to say about that? President Haka in the Ichilema, we are calling upon you. Zambians are calling upon you to come back to earth. Probably you are at Mars. Please come back to Earth and deal with this particular issue. Why is it that you keep on trotting, running around, instead of sitting at State House? President Akainda, we have not forgotten that you've done so many illegal things. One, you've not moved to Nkwazi. You continue staying somewhere, somewhere, community something. That is not right. People are saying, declare your assets. Even if it's not required by, by law. It's just a good, a, good, a good corporate way of doing things. If we, as members of parliament, have declared our assets, what's wrong with you declaring your assets? You are supposed to uphold the constitution, President Haka in the Ichilema. You swore to protect the constitution. You cannot go and obliterate the constitution in the fashion that you are doing. We call upon you, and I feel sorry for you because... As we speak, we are being told that ZRA has underperformed. They have, there's no to, money to collect anywhere because there's no money in the economy. So what are you going to do about all this? What are you going to do, President Haka in the HLM? It has taken you two years. You are celebrating. No, we've got 1.3 billion from IMF. No, IMF has given us money. Things are going to be okay. Where is the 1.3 billion? Why is it not working for the ordinary Zambian? Where is that 1.3 billion? You keep on dancing around, celebrating. Your MPs and ministers are celebrating like little kids when they hear the information that something has happened regarding the 1.3 billion. Oh, the 1.3 billion actually is a mirage. Looks like it's a mirage. So these are issues that we must concentrate on and not PF. Please keep your hands off PF. PF is our baby. It's the baby of the Zambians who believe in democracy, and we want to ask you, please keep your hands off PF. You have used Mao Samp for far too long. And you know why you are using Mao Samp? Probably you understand that a character might not be of sound mind. So I want to continue using him. What are you doing to Mao Samp? It's not fair present in the HLM. I appeal to you. So I hope my message is very clear to you, President Haka in the HDMA, to Mao Sampa that you are being used, and they are using, they are using you because they understand that you are defective. Thank you, colleagues.
Thank you so much. Ndesura mayu mfira mashu wuku fumakuli kalemba wachmiri. Ona bonikson chilangwa. Kaburu ulu mwishiti nari nsori ya mfumu. Chine chine uru wafumi na mchifungo mnensu yu mkaramba wesu yu. Lelo imi bombele ya kuete ya bala ichinjapo. Elo nshila ita uh, profesa ukutibe landa utimashu utuwa kule keresha. Ndefu afenso kia wa nensu wa yuda skariot. Wa yuda skariot muhiri ya muhilava. Eat, but don't forget. We know you have mastered the art of you Dascariot. You are selling us every day, every night, but the bonse ba tupata, bonse hava, na wava alikuata avantua wava temua. Ewe mule panga, na fionse vya kuchitefi wa bushiru, ifi mule chita, ifi ya mungulu, na atuishiba. We are staking our lives for our children. We are going to stake our lives for our children's children and our grand grandchildren. That we must tell you. We are staking our lives and you must know that uh, it's not going to be the same way you have taken us for a ride. Vayuda Scariot, the NFA will know, we know. But don't eat and sell your heads. We know what you are scheming and you know what you are doing. Yes, I've said it before. Statecraft is used everywhere by every government. But there must be decency. There must be honor because the authority we are all having is temporal. We use the same apparatus, mind you, and we know whatever you are doing. So before you take our lives, we shall fight for the people until the last blood. I now invite, uh, by the way, when you are making your presentation, very thorough presentation, the uh, learned uh, colleague here was telling me that the declaration of assets by the head of state is provided for by law. So it's just finding excuses. PF members Chari ba roko chafuma. Elwe chipani mwemwe bantu. Imeni. Tukonka nebu ino bueno na baba nensu. I now invite Professor Nkanduluo, member of Central Committee, to just give a vote of thanks on the remarks made by the Deputy Secretary General. Honorable Professor Luo. Well... <coughs> Well, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Kamtiongo. Mm. Thank you very much, Honorable Kamtiongo. I just want to remind the people of Zambia, as somebody who always speaks for women, that uh, the world over now is uh, experiencing what we call 16 days of gender activism. Yeah. And basically what is happening to the patriotic front at the moment can be described as gender-based violence. And I think if indeed we as a country believe in gender and gender activism, this is a time when all of us should be reflecting on the activities and the manner we treat each other so that we go in the annals of history as a country that did not participate in gender-based violence, especially at this time of the year. Speaking for the women of Zambia, I just want to caution every one of us that uh, what is happening in this country whether we are talking about uh, what is prevailing at the moment, we need to look back and look at the history of where we are coming from and where we are going. But we also need to learn lessons from what is happening in our, on our continent and in particular, even the countries that surround us. 
And as we make decisions, or we start creating a halabaloo, let us remember that this country comprises of women and children. And when the going is bad in every country, the people that suffer the most are the women and the children. Therefore, I would like all of us as a country to look at the happenings now, not with the lens of the patriotic front, but with the lens of the country, the lens of the women, and the lens of the children. Because if we create problems for this country, which has enjoyed peace for a very, very long time, in fact, all of everywhere we go, for those of us who travel a lot, the name Zambia is identified as a country or a beacon of peace. And how can we destroy this? Just because of selfishness of a few individuals or simply because you want to usurp power from uh, the people that are, have been elected to represent the people. I think this is not correct. And I, I just want in saying, um, in the moving of a vote of thanks to say, remember whatever you do, those who kill by the sword, it will come round to you. And remember, this country comprises of women, it comprises of children. The onus is on us to protect Zambia for our children and our children's children. They also deserve to come and enjoy what we have enjoyed. Because the people that are causing havoc right now have eaten a lot. They've enjoyed. But can't we, can't we think about our children? In, in, when I was growing, my father used to say, Mwadi, dear son, never more shuabwadi. So, once a mother never more shuabwadi, Pabungo, Mushitang, Mr. Pami, 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 for the sake of our children, our children's children, for the sake of the women of Zambia, because we don't want to find ourselves in a situation where we start running around, where the men then take advantage and start raping women. And this is why this press conference cannot be at any other opportune time than when we are observing the 16 days of gender activism. Thank you so much. There you have it. Uh, before I give back to uh, uh, MCC Mwamba, therefore I'm going to make a much we are consideration on behalf of the Secretary General and members of the Central Committee, Kundupwa Shabaninsu Kuchingola, Awo Vachiri Valipanshi, Tuali Mona Kwali Fumako Mole Sali Pala, Lelo Tufrebonso Kubika Masali, Padi Badawa Shere, Kumono Kutale Samkuli, Limbi Kutibafuma, Tuntulu. Ichina tumfuta tulingi leno kuchimika ma politics. Lelo utufilo kushwa kutila. Ichina tuwa lava ninsu muku bomba musa ngu wafiria. Ninsala. Ninsala. Pali fintu bala ilwe. Barawa iche. Awa waku mikoti. Ukuti awaka fuirishua. Ife fushila fikishua na lelo. Lelo tule wadili dako wa wava ninsu walipanshi. Tule lombo kutila mwevu teko musa mbili lepo chimo. Elo ifuenga fuwewe minishi baba ntufuwewa MP. Tutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutatutat
Honorable George Sanga. He says this matter is so serious, it's so grave, it threatens national security. And in normal circumstances, the Chief Justice must climb down as a prison judge, as a high court judge, and begin to handle this matter. Because in the manner it's being handled, where national security is threatened, you can actually lose this country. So it's so serious that he has made an appeal to the judiciary that personally the Chief Justice must take interest in this matter and ensure that justice is um, uh, 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 delivered. Uh, the SG, I think, made a clarion call. This party belongs to those that it belongs to. Change of leadership is very clear how it is done. The party has a statute, it has a constitution. He even read the constitutional court. He even read the actual Republican constitution, Article 60. That provides directives and responsibilities for, the, for a political party. He emphasized that the political party is a creature of the, of the constitution, the political party. Even an ordinary person can sue. He has also delved, delved in matters around Mr. Mao Sampa. He says all those actions are illegal and they actually are an affront to the judiciary because these matters are in court. Now, what Mario, or Professor Nkanduluo, I think brought it, that's why we need women to speak. While we men do these things, President Akainde Ichilema, Mao Sampa, and all of us actually engage in things that are threatening national security. But Mayo, Mayo, are these actions we are engaged in protecting women and protecting our children and protecting our country? Every time the country loses peace, the people that suffer most are the women and children. And she reminded us that since 1st December, we are in a period of, of observing the period of uh, 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 gender, activism. gender activism. And she's taken offense that all these issues that are raising political temperature are actually occurring during the 16th day. And she has actually called it that we are engaged in gender violence. So we want to acquire we will call any press conference any time as matters progress. There will be no order because it's very important that we speak to the country and we speak to our, to, to our members. So, Montungulushi, thank you very much for coming at short notice, you members of parliament and members of the MCC and others that have since joined us but they couldn't come here. They are behind the camera because they were late. So thank you very much. And uh, that's the end of our conference. Thank you.